First of all, let me start with congratulations on the doc. Uh, thought it was so well done. Uh, but before we jump into that, uh, I have a ton of questions. Um, if someone, and I, hopefully you'll find some of these at least semi-entertaining or enjoyable. Um, if someone has actually never seen anything you've directed before, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? I think I want them to watch Berna Bertolucci on Bertolucci because I think that that movie encompasses in a quite precise way what I feel it's an act of love, of loving and of loving cinema and understanding the power of uh, conversation and the power of listening and the power of psychoanalysis. I think that is one of my most accomplished works. If you could, and I know people want to make projects with you, but if you get the financing to make anything you want, uh, what would you make and why? I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like unlimited resources. I think that's a little bit for the insecure people. Uh, so I'm not really into uh, like uh, um, looking for a project that can be done extravagantly in terms of the, of the costs. Uh, and I actually feel that I've been doing everything I wanted to do and in, in a very personal way, always, including my last movie, Challengers, still to be finished, but almost done um I, I i i think i'd like to i'd like to i'd like to build more worlds in my life i'd like to create more more worlds with my with my imagination and with the work uh, with the help of great writers and great actors that i work with constantly i'd like to make a musical and i'd like to make an animation film those are the two things that i'd really love to make I'm very curious about both of those coming out of your mind. Um, I will not. I, I hope those both happen. <clears throat> um, what do you? And I'd like to make. I'd like to make. A, that's that I can tell because it's true. I'd like to make like a movie that gets the young version of me of today to be like speed racing heart. Like the way I did have that feeling watching Richard Donner's Superman. So I'd like to make a Superman for today that have that kind of like beautiful feeling that the Donner movie had. I don't know if they have room for that at DC, but that's what I would love to do. I, this was not what I was going to ask you, but how are you interested? The, the, the superhero genre is is definitely the most popular genre on the planet. It is what the a lot of the audience loves going to see these. Is making a superhero movie something you're interested in or not at all? Well, I would like to make, if I could, movies in which I have complete control on the story, on the characters, on the production, on the cut. And I do not believe that there are things that cannot be said. I think that it's a, it's a how you say it. But the point being that uh, um, if someone who has the power to make me do a movie like that would allow me to have that kind of control, then I would consider it very surely. You have something behind you that I love, like Goldrake. Love it. Oh, uh, you, uh, these up here. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Those, I, I grew up with those uh, robots. Uh, it's a big deal to me. I'm, I'm, for me for me too i'm still wondering one of the reasons i have these behind me is because it's great ip that no one is making you know grandizer True. and guy king and battle of the planets and all of these things that i love um that now with modern vfx you can probably do True. true. that's true they tried in the in the early 90s was very bad yeah, the, well, the, the visual effects industry was not what it is today. You, you yeah. know, it was it was too early. Just like Robotech or Star Blazers, there's all these properties that I love, but that's a whole separate thing. Um, if which of your projects changed the most in the editing room in ways you did not expect? Probably my first movie, The Protagonists, which I had very big ambitions for, and eventually I fall flat on my face because I didn't control my work. And I didn't know what was that I wanted to do. That for sure. And certainly Melissa P that I went on doing in a way that I thought I was in control. And I did have control. But then the such control was taken off my hands by the studio. 
and uh, that was a very bitter experience. You have made, if I'm, I could be wrong, but I believe you've made 12 documentaries. Um, uh, when, how do you know when you want to actually make one of them where you feel compelled, I need to tell this story? I want to make documentaries always, like always. I am now making a documentary since four years almost on uh, the state of exception in France and Europe uh, after the uh, uh, massacres at the, in Paris and at the Bataclan. I've been interviewing these luminaries, these incredible thinkers about the concept of the state of exception, which is something that Americans know very well, given Guantanamo and given everything that you had got through from uh, the first uh, uh, desert storm onward. Um, but uh, I have not been able to conclude it because of the COVID in the first place and then a lot of work on other stuff. But it's something that I've been working for a long time. I, I, I always want to make documentaries, always. Does this project you just mentioned, does it have a title? Yes, it's called Intimacy. Got it. You did an ad back in 2013. Uh, I believe it was called Walking Stories. Was that With your... Caius Codelario, which I adore. Right. Well, my question is, was that your first, did that ad sort of lead to this documentary? Was that like, like an opening of the door, if you will? Somehow, because I've been working for this, this short film, fashion film, and I've been shooting in Florence, and I remember that I I were I was staying in a hotel that was owned by the family Ferragamo, uh, while we were shooting, and there was in the, in the in the rooms in the hotel this book called Shoemaker of Dreams, and I was curious about it, and I got a copy, and I and I remember we were shooting the short film in in Florence, Los Angeles, and Hong Kong, and we were really doing it in five days, so we were flying a lot. Flying, shooting, flying, shooting. So what I did, I lost sense of time and I lost sense of uh, sleep. And I started to read the book then. And I loved it. Well, his story is incredible. And I one of the things that I had no idea, of, which you shine a light on in the documentary, is what he was doing at age 10 and 12. It's crazy. What, He's a what genius. he did when he, when, when he was 17, what he was doing. And when I was 10, I was playing with toys. You know, he, he I, can you sort of talk about his life is so unusual? Well, <clears throat> I think that Salvatore Ferragamo literally is one of a kind. It's like that, 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 that rarity, that rare, rare person that has a sort of like, is, is being born with a mission that transcends him and has to be accomplished. And uh, he's a genius. And he is someone who kind of probably have found a way to reconcile the rigor of, of, of the mission he has put himself upon to and the wonderment that he has to preserve in order to continue finding things. Because the way in which he lived his life from the age of five onward was in in the discipline of making and in the wonderment of discovery, constant. That's why probably he died so young, because probably his body couldn't carry the intensity of his personality. I don't know. The more I research, the more I watched the, from your film, the more I researched him, I mean, it, it's, you know, he was almost like the Michelangelo of shoes, you know. In terms somehow, of somehow that's correct. And it's, it's quite accurate. Yeah. yeah just, the level of invention and also what happened with the car accident and what he did and it's incredible yeah agreed um so talk a little bit about one of the things you have you got scorsese in the movie did you know that he was knowledgeable about um you know the shoes and everything else or how did that come about well my idea to to invite marty to be in the movie was because he was he is such a great expert and, and has this kind of incredible lit, literate qualities about the history of Hollywood. And because the history of Hollywood cost, is crossed over by the experience of Ferragamo in that system, we felt it was a great idea to have, ask him to navigate us through what meant 
to be in Hollywood at the time and what to Hollywood was at the time. And uh, he was so gracious and he was so committed. I think he took time to, to study Salvatore as well. So he could tell us things about Hollywood, but also put in that perspective, Salvatore Ferragamo. It was wonderful. It was one of the great moments of my filming career to film Scorsese doing yeah. this great. I can't even imagine. Um, one of the cool things is that you got to use his actual voice in some of the home movies. When did you find out that you had access to that and actually had his voice that you could use? Well, I, I had uh, um, read the book and then I spoke to the guy, to the family Ferragamo and I asked them access to their foundation and their museum. And I discovered like a trove of treasures, including a lot of uh, uh, tapes with the voice of Salvatore Ferragamo and the super eight movies that Salvatore Ferragamo shot uh, since he was like in his late twenties. Um, and I discovered his voice. Uh, but pretty soon, and that became one of the backbones of the structure that, with Tana Thomas, the writer, and with the, with the Walter Fasano, the editor, we decided to go for. Um, talk a little bit about putting together the film in the editing room, because obviously, I'm sure you had a ton of footage. A uh, ton you, of footage. Did you? How did you decide on the length? And was it almost a uh, like a longer movie? Well, no, I think there was a lot of material. We had to regretfully lose a lot. And when we did it, present the movie in Venice, uh, it was a bit longer and there was a lot, a lot of uh, hinging a lot on, on, on emotional stories from younger members of the family. And then afterwards, I reviewed the movie again with the Walter and I realized that probably to tame that down a little bit more would have been best. And now the version you saw is the version that came out of after Venezia and before the actual release in America. Eventually, this will be out on home video. You know, there'll be DVD or Blu-ray. Do you have a lot of extras that you're putting on, like a, any extra footage? I don't, I, we have not put our minds on it yet, but I, I can promise you that we will, definitely. Um, before I run out of time with you, uh, you know I'm a fan of your work. What was it about um, Challengers that said, I want to make this movie? Many elements. The great script from the, from Justin Kuritzka, sexy and fun, and never done something like that. Um, working with Amy Pascal, who I adore, who I feel I'm respectfully to her wonderful husband. I feel married with, sure. and uh, and Zendaya, of course, she's just inspiring and 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 sublime. So there were so many great elements that could I couldn't say no. Basically, I was like. I have to say yes. I don't, I'm not sure. You, you've wrapped filming. Where are you in the production process? I am starting mix uh, early December. Oh, okay. So you're almost done. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah, of, yeah. one of the things I really enjoyed Mike's work in West Side Story was He's that, what, right? What was that? Did you see him in that and say, oh, I want him in Challengers? Yeah. When do you think people might get their first look at a trailer or footage? We should ask MGM, but <laughs> I think they love the movie, so we'll see. Um, so I definitely want to know, uh, you uh, you were rumored to do Brideshead Revisited. Was that I wasn't something? rumored. I wanted to make it. We couldn't make. Uh, we couldn't put together the entire budget they needed for it, but we really wanted to make it. Um, and what about, uh, pardon me for just peppering you with questions, but what happened? Uh, it's I your read, job. <laughs> it, 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 yes, um, but... It, I read that there was a biopic uh, for Aubrey Hepburn uh, for Apple with uh, Rooney Mara maybe playing the role. Is there is that true? Is it not true? I found very interesting that every time, uh, often there is like a, re a, re a leak or a release on what I'm doing. I work a lot and I love to develop a lot and I love I work I love to find projects and uh, uh, and Rooney is one of the greatest actresses of her generation and I would be flattered to work with her. That's what I can say. Right. So do you know what you actually are going to do next or are you picking between projects? I'm producing Dea Kulumbegashvili new movie, the great director from of beginning. I am now we are almost done with this great filmmaker from Italy called Pietro Castellitto, who uh, is directing his second feature that I'm producing. And um, I, I'm producing a lot and hopefully I'm going to uh, finalize the shooting I need to conclude for um, intimacy, my documentary.
before I run out of time with you, uh, I, as I said, I haven't seen Bones and All yet, but everyone I know has raved about it. When you were making the film, um, did you realize it was going to be something special? I did felt it was special because the, the script was amazing and because uh, the actors were just sublime. And America is a very beautiful place. Listen, man, I'm, I'm really happy that everything is going really well for you. And, you. Um, and I've said this to you before, and I'll say it again. Um, it, not to specifically talk about one thing, but I, I still think Call Me By Your Name was the best film of that year. Uh, I think that's a, a masterpiece that will be remembered for Thank a very you. long time. You know? Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you so much. Um, listen, have a fantastic day. And I, I really am so happy to talk to you again. Likewise.